Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm here to introduce bills 5739, 5740, and 5741, a ban on assault weapons and a ban on high capacity magazines introduced on behalf of Governor Gina Raimondo and Attorney General Peter Narona, and a safe storage bill on behalf of the Attorney General. And I'm proud to be sponsoring these bills and advocating for them along with the governor and the AG's office. So I just want to begin by telling a story. At around this time last year, my son's school went into lockdown. <clears throat> I was out to breakfast at the Tees on Main Street with my daughter Lulu, another mom from school, my friend Allison, and her baby Sunny. Our phones were out on the table for us to hopefully take cute photos of our kids eating together um, and to eventually distract them so that we could eat, and mine lit up. It was a text from our son's school saying that they were in lockdown and we were not to come to campus. We were to await further notification. I don't know what my first thought should have been when I read this, but it wasn't fear or shock. It was something like resignation, that finally this has happened here. Of course it has, because it was only a matter of time. That quickly morphed into panic as text messages kept flooding in and we paid our bill and scooped our babies out of the restaurant. Other parents' messages were flooding in saying, I'm driving to school, or we're not supposed to go, and I don't care, I'm going, or who is closest to school. We were racing back to my house, the one closest to our school, and all I could think about was my son Escher and the rest of his kindergarten friends huddled somewhere that the school had designated as safe. I could picture him exactly in my head, and I thought of his sweet, innocent face, and I thought, is he scared? And of course, I thought of the question that no parent should have to think of. Is he alive? Before we even arrived back at my house, we received another message from school. There had been an accident, a mistake. There had never been any danger. We were returning to business as usual. That message arrived 11 minutes after the first one. 11 minutes may seem like a short time, but it is an eternity when one of your child, children is in danger. It has been the longest 11 minutes of my life. Because this is the world we live in now. We get our kids ready for school. If you're anything like me, you have to hurry them out the door because you're late and whisk them into school, some days stopping for an extra kiss, an extra hug, a single extra moment, because in the world we live in now, kids go to school and they never come home. This is the future we're giving our kids, a life of fear, a life of waiting for the next tragedy to be theirs, a life of not if, but when. As parents, we do so much to protect our kids and to make sure they are safe and happy, but I can't protect them from this by myself. We have to do this together. These three bills seek to mitigate the crisis of gun violence we live in today, and if we do nothing, that our kids will live in tomorrow. House Bill 5739 seeks to ban high-capacity magazines. These magazines make it easier for killers to kill more people faster. House Bill 5741 seeks to ban assault weapons. These guns are made so you can't get from point A to point B without getting killed. These magazines and these weapons kill Jewish people in worship at their synagogue in Pittsburgh. They kill gay people at a nightclub in Orlando. They kill high schoolers going about their school day in Parkland. They kill Muslims in worship at their mosque in New Zealand just five days ago. And already the government in New Zealand is promising to make restrictions on these kind of weapons. They kill little kids at school only two hours away from here in Sandy Hook, kids just like mine. Bill 5740 requires that firearms be stored safely and enhances the penalties when a child accesses and harms him or herself or others with that firearm. We know that so many gun deaths are accidents and suicides and this bill seeks to save those lives. We're going to hear a lot tonight that these bills infringe on our Second Amendment rights, but they do not. Even Justice Scalia said that it is not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever, in any manner whatsoever, and for whatever purpose. 
we'll hear that they won't solve the crisis of gun violence. But we are sitting here today talking about ways to solve a big problem. There is no one solution. We can't pass one single law that will stem the public health crisis of gun violence that we live in today. But like the other big problems, we can pass laws <clears throat> that move us closer, that will save lives, even if we can never save every single one. This is how we tackle other big issues as lawmakers. We ban plastic bags, even though that one thing won't stop climate change. We approve partial fills on powerful drugs, even though that one step will not cure the opioid epidemic. But we take steps based on evidence from experts on how to mitigate a crisis. We're gonna hear from a lot of experts tonight who are going to tell you that these bills are parts of the action that we have to take to stem this crisis. This is what we must do here. I'm asking us to pass these bills as a mom who wants a safer world for her kids than the one we live in now. I'm asking us to pass these bills as a newly elected state representative. A year ago this week, last St. Patrick's Day, I knocked on my first door and said that I was running to be state representative. The first conversation that I had was with a mother of two young kids who were even younger than mine who were holding on to her legs <laughs> while we spoke, who said that her biggest concern was keeping her kids safe from gun violence. That conversation would repeat itself over and over and over at the doors with parents, Republicans, Democrats, and unaffiliated voters throughout my campaign. And now today I'm asking us to pass these bills as a lawmaker. Sending our kids to school or to the movie theater or to church shouldn't be an act of faith. We have the responsibility to keep Rhode Islanders safe and I urge you all to support these bills to do so. Any questions for the sponsor on any one of the three bills that has been? Yes. Hi, um, I know you put these bills in, in behalf, on behalf of the Attorney General, but would you happen to know? I'm sorry. sorry I know you put you. the bill in on behalf of the Attorney General, but would you know um, how they came or how you came across the magic number of 10? for ammunition in a magazine? Um, I guess I don't know that that's a magic number, um, but you could ask, you know, the att Assistant Attorney General will be here where you can ask, I think, more specific questions about how they came to some of those decisions in the bill. Um, I do, sorry, I know a lot of the, the information came out of the governor's working group, and the head of that working group is the colonel, and he'll be here to testify tonight in favor of them. Um, and, and just one other question, um, are you aware that most common handguns carry more than 10 rounds? Semi-automatic handguns that just about every gun owner owns carries more than 10 rounds? I guess I'm not sure if that's true or not. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> 